come with us to St. Augustine to explore the vibrant culinary scene. We have already previously done more touristy things in the city, known as the oldest continuously occupied settlement of European origin. So this time around we decided to stick to food with other things sprinkled in. Cheers to the weekend! The Bridge of Lions is a well-known landmark here. We stayed on the east side of the bridge, which we loved. The west side is downtown where most, but not all, the action happens. If you ever don't know where the west side is, just follow your heart. Wait, nope, follow the sunset. Our favorite sunset activity we enjoyed every evening was to park the car on the east side of the bridge and walk to the west towards downtown St. Augustine. We would either make our way into town or just turn around and walk back depending on where the restaurant was for the evening that we wanted to go to. Depending on your exact itinerary, you could clock 5,000 plus steps. This is a great way to stay active during an indulgent weekend. The city was officially established in 1565. It is said that in the 1880s, the city was neglected. Then Henry Flagler built a large number of opulent hotels and promoted the town as a winter resort for the elite of the north to escape the cold. If you only have time for one dinner in St. Augustine, we absolutely recommend Michael's, located on the west side in downtown St. Augustine. They have an extensive wine list with many Spanish wines. I had the filet mignon with pointed raised blue cheese melted on top and a red wine sauce. Sean had the hanger steak with a delicious mushroom crust. For sides, we had the roasted carrots with lemon tahini and pomegranate molasses and market vegetables. We were going to skip dessert but ended up sharing the tres leches pineapple cake, which was the perfect light choice to finish off the best meal. The service and atmosphere are top notch. Another solid dinner option is Black Fly. And although the name is somewhat off-putting at first, once I saw the logo, I did some Googling and it is in fact a term used in fly fishing. We had the tastiest steak appetizer and shared it as usual, but it was so good we went for seconds. Then I had the chicken cordon bleu and Sean had the blue crab papalou. Zero space for dessert tonight. If you are looking for a fun, cool, vibey cocktail bar, do not fly past Odd Birds. It is also on the east side of the bridge, walking distance from Black Fly. In a college town, it felt like a little more mature crowd, which we really loved. and. I also love the fact that the music wasn't too loud. Their signature cocktails seem odd, but they are so good, you just gotta trust it. There's even a hidden doorway, but it was locked for a private event. This smoky old fashioned came served in the most creative way I have ever seen. You know it's a fun bar when the check arrives in a book like this. <laughs> Time to get those steps in. In a video I watched about St. Augustine, someone suggested to go watch the sunrise from the lighthouse. Luckily I found out it's not open at sunset, so luckily we did not go. There are 219 steps in total to the top. On each landing, you can stop and read fun facts about the tower and its history, and these are actually legit fun facts. The top is a pretty cool view, and I would do it again on a day when it isn't as overcast, although this was already super sweet. 
The St. Augustine Lighthouse was completed in 1874. It took three years to build due to a lack of manpower and funds. It was first lit on October 15, 1874. Once you get back to the bottom, there are some more exhibitions you can visit relating to the lighthouse and its history. A great lunch stop is the Floridian in downtown St. Augustine. I had the Black Sails in the Sunset cocktail, which is a tropical vibe reminiscent of a pina colada, but with an underberg float. I was unsure about that little part, but the flavors really complemented each other. For starters, we shared companies coming. Sean had the Engrits, and then I had the braised brisket tacos. We made another touristy stop at Ripley's Believe It or Not. I remember watching the show on TV as a kid, and although we wouldn't go back, it was good to finally see what is on the inside of this museum that we always drive past when in St. Augustine. The museum is housed in the former Castle Warden Hotel. Many claim they hear or see the ghosts of the two women that died in a fire in 1944. We thought this was a magnifying glass, which it obviously wasn't. Honestly, where did this guy even get his suits in the early 90s or any other clothing for that matter? 100 years later, Sean and I struggle with it at just 6'9 and 6'1 respectively. And then entered the Vortex Tunnel. I almost lost my phone the first time because halfway in it truly felt like this walkway was moving. This was a lot of fun and we did it a couple times. We have one last foodie spot, Schmeagles Bagels. If you're not there early in the day, you'll miss out. They sell out early and then put up their sold out sign for the latecomers. We grabbed some of these goodies for breakfast on our way home and can highly recommend it. Finally, a walk on the beach is always a good idea. A little fun fact about the St. Augustine Beach is that it is dog friendly. We didn't take our dogs for the weekend though, but it is a good option. Aside from St. Augustine Beach, there are many other beaches to explore like Crescent Beach, Villano Beach, Anastasia State Park, Surfside Park and Butler Beach. Enjoy your trip to St. Augustine.